Good evening, everybody. Here to talk. Is life great? Wonderful. I mean, you're um, When I sat down to write this presentation, I thought, oh, God, it's on Valentine's night. Um, how am I going to make this interesting, stimulating, and exciting? And I thought, firstly, I need an audience. So thank you very much indeed for turning up this evening. Um, with the waste ones. What I wanted to do was just find out a little bit about how people feel about, about technology. Who generally sort of likes technology? Okay, that's quite okay. Who hates it? Ooh. Yeah? It's a good Does it drive you mad? Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, so you actually, although it drives you mad, you actually try to embrace it? You have to. Okay. <laughs> or are you being dragged into using it, kicking and screaming? Um, <laughs> there are a few people that, that certainly in, my, in my career I've come across who are being dragged in for exactly that scenario. Okay, it was good to just get a feel of, you know, people have different perceptions about technology, what it does, how, how it works, whether they think it will work for them, whether it, whether it won't. So hopefully what I can do is just give you a flavour of what's going on out in the technology marketplace at the moment. Um, you know, what's going on in telecoms is, is pretty indicative of the picture, uh, picture there. Uh, this last 12 months, certainly in telecoms, has been quite dramatic. Um, but most of you heard of Steve Jobs? Yeah. Of course, the, the, uh, the pioneer behind, uh, behind Apple, uh, the driver behind Apple, albeit though that one of the key designers with Apple is actually an Englishman. Um, uh, died last year. Um, more recently, um, for those of you who know Motorola, Google, uh, Google bought Motorola for $7.5 billion and uh, day before yesterday it was ratified by the United States government to go through. Um, of course with Sony Ericsson, anybody using a Sony Ericsson phone? Okay, a few of you using Sony Ericsson's. Well unfortunately, hang on to it, it's going to become a historical component now because obviously Sony Ericsson is no more. Uh, Sony bought out the Ericsson group for just I think it was a tad under a billion pounds just before Christmas. It's, again, it's gone through. So our product's coming out in the next few weeks, which will just have the Sony name. Uh, they bought the tech, a lot of the technologies. They'll be working closely with them. Um, so it's, it's an environment where there is a continual amount of change. Um, things happen at a rate of knots. How many have been out there and bought the latest product and said, God, this is fantastic, and then two months later, some of the news come out, which is like the next greatest thing, the 4 or the 4S or the 5 or the 5S or whichever model of iPhone or Google uh, product has come out has suddenly hit the marketplace and you're thinking, oh God, does that mean that the piece of equipment I'm using is now out of date? Anyone heard of the cloud? Does anybody understand the cloud? <laughs> uh, what I want to try and do with some of these acronyms that come out is give them a little bit of substance for you and just give you a little bit of a flavour of what some of the technologies that are out there actually do and what some of these things mean. Essentially the cloud has been around for years. The cloud is just a reference to products and services that you don't run in your office. They're run by someone else in a data centre or a systems <coughs> centre outside of your office environment and it's managed by them, not you. Um, the cloud has become the buzzword that many people have, uh, have embraced because it does cover a lot of things and uh, I'll hopefully try and uh, give you a little bit of substance behind it. Now the dominance of the smartphone, how many are using smartphones by the way? What you deem as a smartphone, yeah, it's, it, is, it is pretty significant and uh, I picked up some stats this last week that, that I'll share with you which are, uh, even I was amazed, I see a lot of stats um, uh, on a regular basis, but this one was, was pretty survival and surprising. The smartphone has become the new computer. Um, how many of you have seen over the last few years that the mobile phone went from being the brick from 20 years ago and it slowly shrank down to about 2000, 2002, it was about the size of a credit card. You couldn't read the damn thing, the screen was so tiny, but you loved it because you could stick it in your shirt pocket. Well, it's going the other way, it's getting bigger again, the screens are getting larger because people found they just couldn't read. Um, the size of the screens. Therefore, as a result, everybody wanted the product to do more. 
Uh, in fact, some of the latest smartphones now have processors that are as powerful as laptops from three and four years ago. Um, so, smartphone has become the new portable computer in many respects. Does anyone hear this word that's cropped up? Convergence? Is it cropped up in any conversations? Combining things together? Oh. There's a lot of that happening in IT, in telecommunications. Products coming together to work together uh, is, is certainly driving the way people work and <laughs> changes in their working patterns. And it's, it's become a joined up technology. Most people are now looking for, well, I've got this, but I wanted to work with this, this, and this. How many of you bought a technology product and found and got it home and said, oh, God, it doesn't work with this thing, uh, uh, this printer I've got at home? Or I don't have the latest update, so I've got to update software. Uh, it can be a frustration, but equally, there are ways of being able to manage it. Um, so hopefully, I can help you. Changes in working practices. Technology now is driving the way people work. People are working more remotely. How many of you are working out of, a, of, a, of an office? How many of you are working from home? How many of you work in a combination of the both? As a result, you're probably finding that you're becoming more reliant on technologies that allow you to work from where you need to be at critical times rather than being desk bound or office bound. Uh, the technologies that have, have come out in the last 10 <coughs> years have really hugely changed the way in which people work and operate. So, a little bit of a question now. Anyone want to hazard a guess at how many smartphones were sold last year? A pump, anyone? 25 million. In the world. Billions. This is worldwide, yeah. I think if most uh, most manufacturers heard those numbers, they'd be going, wow, that'd be fantastic. There's 487 million smartphones were sold last year, in 2011. But just as a matter of uh, balance to that, would anybody like to hazard a guess as to how many computers were sold last year? I'd say less, 200 million. 200? Mm. Mm. 414 million. It's the first time that smartphones have outsold computers um, mm -hmm. since the advent of the smartphone. And it's a significant change in the way people are looking at products and how they're looking to work. Um, albeit it's driving up the size of some of the technology. Have anyone seen the new Samsung Galaxy Note? It's a big screen mobile phone. Samsung Galaxy Tab. People are using iPads. People are using a mobile technology now where they need the larger screen because they like it, but they like the portability of it. So it's a huge change um, in the way that the people are buying products. And it's changing the way they work. 73 million more users are using smartphones. That's greater than, than the population of the UK. It's a massive change. But what are the business challenges that, that, that you face out there in the marketplace at the moment? Well, I think most of you are feeling the increasing cost of doing business. It gets highly competitive as a result of that. So profits tend to take a bit of a beating, so you can, you can necessarily get, win your business. You have less to spend on marketing, but increased customer expectations. But you need to live with the same or more for less. Anyone feeling that? Okay. This is where any communications really comes in, because part of it is you know, making the right choice. The choices can be the difference between you being fairly successful or hugely successful. I don't know whether it's necessarily a case of failure, but making an incorrect choice can be a costly one. As a result, how important is the telecom, telecoms in your business? I suppose a good question to everybody, if I was to disconnect your mobile, switch off your broadband and cut off your landline phone, how would you communicate with your customers? <laughs> I think the most critical element of that is it's really important the decisions you make about the solutions that you choose for your products that you're trying to sell and equally the type of communications that you use to, to stay in touch with your customers. Uh, so you need to plan short, medium and long term. Um, it's just like putting a business plan together. You need to think of the business in terms of how you're going to communicate with your customers, not just now, but medium and long term. 
the choice is out there, the quality is out there, the availability is out there, the flexibility is out there. But what do you choose? You know, to go hardware, do you go software? You know, where do you start? Well, a lot of people find it's like God, it's such a nightmare because there's so much out there to choose from. So I have some suggestions, particularly for new businesses that are that are starting up. But sometimes this is also appropriate to businesses that are already operating. If you don't have one, get a domain name. It's vital in terms of the impressions that you make. If your business says joeblogs at hotmail.co.uk or yahoo.com, people will look at you in a slightly different way from a te technological perspective because they'll wonder whether you've actually got a website. If you haven't got a website, are you a business that will be around tomorrow if they do business with you today? Don't just advertise your mobile. There are technologies out there, and I'll show you some of them uh, uh, in a moment, where you can actually get a landline, but you don't need to have the little socket on the wall. You can actually advertise a landline number, but still be mobile. And it makes a huge difference in terms of, again, how people perceive you. Also, it costs are significantly less for a local person to call you on a local number than to call your mobile. It's more expensive. They may think twice about calling you if you're just advertising a mobile number alone. Organise a business address. Little, the little prompt here for, uh, uh, for Joe at the desk end. You know, this is a great way of being able to give yourself a business address without actually having to pay the regular costs of a business address. It can make a huge difference in people saying, oh, there's actually an address, they have a landline, they have a website, they have a domain name. These all make the impacts. Business email, <coughs> it's attached to the domain name. Business email is inexpensive. You can get enterprise class business email now for as little as four or five pounds a month. It's worth the investment, trust me. And then when it comes to the technical stuff, or all the nice goodies that come out into, into the marketplace. How many of you have been out and had a look at iPhones? Played with iPhones? Got an iPhone? <coughs> um, how many are you using uh, Android products? Blackberries? Interesting, eclectic, uh, eclectic mix. I would always suggest don't get drawn by the sexiness of the kit. It's about looking at what operating system the device uses. If you choose that, your decision becomes far, far easier. But it's about choosing, does that platform do all the things you want it to do for your business? Don't get involved in personal attributes to it. Think of it as a business product. As I say, the platform choice is as, as important as the device. And here's some, just some indicators. Anyone want to hazard a guess who's got 1.5% of the, of the market share globally? in operating systems for mobile. Absolutely right, it's Windows Phone. A company as large as that has got such a tiny share. What about the 11%? That's Blackberry. 15? Apple. It's Apple, absolutely right. 52% is Android. 52% of the smartphones worldwide now are Android devices. And a lot of it's driven by the fact that the platform is what they call open source. That is, any developers can develop the platform. So the amount of applications that are available for Android devices is astonishing. It's over half a million. Uh, they grew at a faster pace than, than the Apple App Store did. And, and it's continuing to do so. So when it comes to all these products and services, planning for the future really becomes extremely important. These sort of thought-provoking comments I made here is you need to think about compatibility with what you already have. Will what you buy work with what you already have? Have you got the connectivity that you really need? Do you have got the flexibility? Will it return productivity and a return on investment uh, for you as a business? The bandwidth, have you got the right enough bandwidth for you to use the internet for the services that are available on the internet? It's more being driven now by being able to connect to the net. So investing in a good broadband connection is huge. Take time to consider some of these or get help because a mistake can be costly. 
you tie yourself into contracts. I went to see uh, a client last week. They signed themselves in for a telephone system and services with a well-known supplier for seven years. They will have paid at the end of the contract more than four times the value of the equipment. So, rather than me talk, I thought I'd show you a few things about what's going on in terms of new innovations. Uh, the way we work is changing, and it's changing again. Uh, does anybody know what, if I said unified communications, has anybody got an idea of what that might mean? Ian, what do you think? Well, it's a way of uh, pulling together communication so you can send a voicemail and it becomes a, a text message or whatever, and uh, it's, it's pulling everything together into one place. It is. It's a lot of bringing communications to working together, landlines and mobiles to working together, IT and, and telecoms working together. But, Got a bit of a clip here. Decide for yourself. I've got 80 seconds to tell you about OneNet Express. It's an innovative new service from Vodafone. If you run a small business, you're going to like it. It merges your landline and mobile phone into one, so you'll never miss a business call again, and it makes you look like a local business. This is how it works. Take Jamie. He runs a small plumbing business, and sometimes he just can't answer the phone. His phone intelligently diverts to others in the business until the call is answered. This is what we call a hunt group. He can also set all company phones to ring simultaneously, where the first person to pick up handles the call. Then there's Emma. She runs an engineering firm, and she's always on the move. She's created a fully customized switchboard using OneNet Express. She's set up an automated answer service that allows customers to select and be transferred straight through to the department they need. She can even transfer calls and play hold music to customers whilst they wait. So it's like having a virtual assistant with her throughout the day. Check out what OneNet Express does for Greg. He runs a window cleaning business and wants it to grow. But he doesn't want the costs of setting up new offices in other towns. So, by giving him multiple local landline numbers direct to his mobile, OneNet Express helps him to look like a local business. Greg can generate more customers by being local to more people and can now organize and send out his regional window cleaners direct from his mobile. And it makes his business look bigger. So, that's it in 80 seconds, and as you'd expect from Vodafone, there's a whole lot more, and it's dead simple to set up. If you run a small business, what are you waiting for? OneNet Express will make sure you never miss your business calls and help you to look like a local business, no matter where you're based. Check out what OneNet Express can do for your business. Interesting, isn't it? Being able to combine a landline and mobile together and not miss a call. I actually have 13 landline numbers attached to my mobile because I, use, I actually use this service. So I actually advertise for work in Birmingham, Manchester and London as well as in key areas across South Wales. Um, and I can tell when the calls are coming in what nines are being used and I have no hardware for this. It's all hosted by Vodafone's network. So I can program it up and uh, together with, uh, with their network team I can have it divert, I can have it control uh, costs and calls. It's a really fabulous uh, solution. But it's not the only solution out in the marketplace, there are a number of others. But this is quite a good example of what is out there in the market to be able to combine. So a small business can actually have a reach further than maybe where you're working currently. Anybody heard of proximity marketing? I don't want to put it up there. Um, most of you, are, when it comes to marketing your business, are probably using the traditional methods. You're probably doing internet marketing, you're probably doing snail mail marketing, email marketing. There are a myriad of varying ways. But there is technology out there now that can do the same sort of thing. Um, it can arrive in a number of different ways. It can use Wi Fi, GPS, it can use infrared, SMS or MMS messaging. Um, but there's a lot being done via Bluetooth. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit of a, it's a video clip that shows you how proximity <coughs> marketing works with a smartphone. So here, people walking past the coffee shop, their devices are being scanned by some hardware inside the coffee shop and it's sending out a message to the phone. Providing the Bluetooth is switched on, <coughs> 
customer accept or decline a request, so it's a commission marketing piece. Well, that, well they've accepted or declined the request, if they've accepted, the customer receives an offer led message. It opens up like a, like a text message in, in, in some respects, and it can be, in this case, come in for a free coffee and show this code on, on your mobile phone. It can increase footfall by attracting people who are just walking past your, your locations or your businesses and potentially your profits. That's a good indicators of this. Uh, anybody been to Cardiff City Football Club? See any of the games? Well, Cardiff City have Bluetooth proximity marketing wide throughout the stadium. Um, and if you've had your mobile phone on and you've got your Bluetooth on, you may be getting messages from local advertisers. If you're sitting in the business uh, executive area, you may get business orientated messages sent to you via Bluetooth. Um, they can manage a 30,000 seat stadium quite easily with the technology that's inbuilt. A business in Cardiff had this installed uh, on Whitchurch Street and saw a 15% increase in their business as a result. Um, 100,000 people in the first month downloaded the messaging. Uh, took advantage of the offer. The beauty of this compared with traditional methods is it works 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So it's on all the time. It's intelligent now. If you walk past, it sends you a message. If you walk back within a pre-designated period of time, it won't send you the same message again, so you won't get bombarded by lots of information. It's a great way of being able to market, and it's inexpensive too. If you consider Traditional marketing methods or an advert in the press might be 200 to 2,000 pounds. A solution like this can cost you as little as 99 pounds a month. So it's a great way of letting technology do some work for you. Uh, they can walk away with messages in their pocket. You can create a database from it. So as a result, you can start delivering out personalized content. It's a great way of being able to interact with customers. The environment is huge. There are 110 million registered handsets in the UK. I know there's maybe only 65 million people, but a lot of people have got more than one handset. In some cases, there are two or three. 95% of them are equipped with Bluetooth. They invariably have it visible. So, for example, in a 60-seat stadium, up to 30,000 could receive the message. And that was information supplied by Cardiff City Football Club and Ofcom. The power of the cloud. I mean, talking about the cloud, um, I wanted to show you a clip of what a big company is doing with the cloud, and that's Microsoft. So, I'll show you what they're up to at the moment. Today, Office is on over a billion PCs around the world, and 40 million customers are paying for Microsoft Cloud services. But really, this is just the beginning. Office 365 lets us take our Office suite and all of the servers that go along with it and move those to the cloud with a world-class productivity service that really will define the next generation of productivity. No other online service can provide the rich productivity capabilities of Office 365. The ease of use and depth of services of Office combined with the communication and collaboration capabilities of Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and Link Online deliver incredible benefits for organizations of all sizes. For the first time, companies of all sizes can really get to enterprise class software integrated together the way we designed it. I'm personally excited about the new service that we're introducing to professionals and small businesses. Businesses that do not have formal IT staff but have big business needs for communication and collaboration. Small businesses need to be able to have services that are easy to use and easy to use quickly. With the introduction of Office 365, we are providing a service that enables small businesses to get up and running in a matter of minutes. I used to be a Microsoft CIO, and Office 365 is exactly the product I wanted to see as a CIO. An online service that I could rely on that had enterprise class capabilities that could serve my users around the world. Office 365 means that we are there for you 365 days a year, 7 by 24. 
whether that's the service, the reliability of the service, the availability, or support for you. We have financially backed uptime guarantees that gives you money back if we don't meet our commitments to you. One of the things I love is that I can share my work with others through the broadcast capabilities of PowerPoint. Right from within PowerPoint, I'm able to initiate a broadcast that's accessible to my colleagues, whether they're working on a PC or accessing the information from a mobile device. With SharePoint Online, there's just so many wonderful collaboration scenarios that we're unlocking for our customers. One of my personal favorites is the MySite capabilities, where every employee in an organization has their own personal site that they get to customize. They can add their documents, they can add status updates for what they're working on. And some people really think of it as sort of a Facebook for the enterprise, where you get your own place to share what's going on, and then other people can comment on what you're doing, can follow you, uh, can tag your information, and it really just makes it so easy for people to find each other in an organization and connect and collaborate in ways that they never could before. I love the powerful capabilities of Exchange Online. They not only help me be more productive in organizing the mail that I receive, managing my inbox to be more effective, manage my calendar with partners and colleagues, no sacrifice. A great example of how the power of the rich client like Office and the power of the, the back end serv servers like uh, SharePoint or Link comes together is a scenario that we would often refer to as co authoring. That is when you're using Word 2010 or PowerPoint 2010, multiple people can open the same document all at the same time. One of the things I love about Link is that it enables people and businesses to work across distances. The ability to have that very simple capability to have PC to PC audio or video conversations, the ability to have presence and instant message capabilities to enable me to work with people around the world, very powerful capabilities delivered with Office 365. At the core, Office 365 helps you save money and it makes you far more productive. The really exciting thing is that Office 365 delivers our products the way we intended them to be delivered integrated together and providing the richest capabilities you can possibly imagine across end users' PCs, their phones, and their browsers. Learn more today by signing up for the beta at office365.com, or you can talk to one of our 16,000 partners, or follow us and stay engaged on Facebook and Twitter. That's going to cost me a fortune. I'll never be able to afford all, those, all, that, all that functionality. How do you use your Microsoft stuff now? In some way, shape, or form? You know, fair, fair, fair amount of them. You can get access to that sort of surface services for as little as around four or five pounds a month. Uh, I know because I use it in my business. Uh, I use Office 365. If I want to stay in contact with people who are much further afield, I can use the video collaboration, the messaging collaboration within 365, and to eradicate the distances. I don't need to get in the car and spend lots of money on the fuel to get from, uh, to talk to somebody. I can do that via uh, the solution. Collaboration is fab. When it comes to collaborating on documents, I don't need to create uh, multiple versions of documents. And you can get it on mobile. Uh, it, it really is uh, tremendous. But What's the next must-have device that this is all coming on? Some of you might have seen this already. Um, Nokia have merged with Microsoft and collaborating on a new device.
was Nokia's first attempt using the Windows Phone platform. Um, most of you have ever, was your first mobile a, a Nokia by any chance? Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of you say, saying yes there. Um, yeah, they suffered from maybe not doing quite as much as they needed to in recent years, but the collaboration with, um, with Microsoft is huge. Uh, I think they're a sleeping giant. Essentially, one and a half percent, the only way they, they're going is up, and they're putting enormous resources behind it. Uh, but the beauty is the collaboration that we showed in Office 365 straight to the device is totally seamless. It really does, it's just like using Office as if you're using it on a desktop PC. There's not a huge issue when it comes to, oh, I've got to learn a new system and how what way to do things, because you're actually utilizing something that you're already familiar with. So how can we help? Well, simply, we can help deliver the cloud to a mobile device for you. Uh, we do this for a number of companies. But that's enough for me. I could, uh, I could talk until the cows come home. But uh, if you've got any questions, I'd love to take them. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.